Hey guys, today we are working on a 1996 Ford SHO that has a no crank problem. The history of the vehicle is it had an engine replaced, ran fine after the engine was replaced, a customer drove it for a few days and then brought it back and now it's not cranking at all. The garage I'm working for today suspects that the engine block ground was located in the wrong place and showed me where they bolt, bolted it to, and they'd be correct. The ground is located in the wrong place. Uh, how do we explain how the vehicle cranked and ran in the first place um, is something I'm going to attempt to do in this video. But what I wanna do, we'll do this one a little different than we have in the past. I want to show you guys how to quickly identify a bad block ground. And it really just involves a simple test light. So let me show you the test first, and then we'll talk about the variables and how the car maybe ran before and not running now and all that stuff on the car. So I'm just using a, an incandescent style test light that I'm connecting directly to battery ground. Want to check our light always, make sure the light works. I suppose you could use an LED test light for this, but I don't, I don't recommend the LED one here. Just a regular, you know, cheap little incandescent test light would be fine. What we want to do, if you suspect that the block has a bad ground, we want to connect the light to anything that is metal on the block, metal, aluminum. In this case, the throttle body is bolted to an aluminum intake, aluminum cylinder heads, and I'll be fine just touching right here. This light, right, you see it is not lighting. It shouldn't light. On any system, the voltage here and on the, on the block itself and then battery negative should be the same. So of course the test light's not going to light. If I switch the polarity of the test light, go to battery positive, you see the test light's lighting and so that looks like maybe has, has a good ground. Did you see the light is changing there on me, isn't it? You see that? That was not, I did not anticipate that. It shouldn't be doing that either. So that's another test. The one I wanna show you, focus on this guys, battery negative to here. All right, so now what we wanna do is I need to get an alligator clip on this. So you can watch this the same time I'm loading the circuit. To load the circuit, we simply want to crank the engine over. The starter draws the most amperage and it will surge this block with all of this energy that's looking to come back to battery ground. And that's when we'll see this problem. So let me get the clip on this and I'll show it to you. All right, I'm gonna go inside and turn the key on, crank the engine over. Turning the key on might be good enough too to see it, so watch. See that test light light when I first turned the key on? That should not do that. Cranking it over now. See when the light gets real bright like that, that's when the starter is energized and we're sending all that current flow from the starter motor through the block. And again, the block is looking for a ground back to battery negative. When I let off of the key, that's just in the run position now. And the reason the light is dim is not as much current flow is going through the circuit. So that's the test guys, really it's that simple. Connect the light between the battery and the block, and it should not light. For more information on this problem, I have at least two or three other videos I've done in the past that deal with bad block grounds. I'll, I'll post links in the description of this video for that. And I'll also, for those of you that want to really learn the theory behind this and why it does this, I actually did a lecture with my class at Rosedale Tech where I described this process and I drew the internal diagrams of the starter and described why this occurs. 
and it was maybe about a 45 minute lecture I did with my class and that is available on Scanner Dan or Premium and I'll post the link to that video as well in the description of this one and there is a 14 day free trial for you guys if you want to check that out feel free to cancel your subscription before the 14 days you won't be charged a dime but you owe it to yourself to watch that lecture and really get a good grasp of what's going on here so how do we explain why the car would start at times and other times not well there are various ground locations on a vehicle let me show you a couple of them so there's one ground strap you see this braided steel cable right here there's a ground sta strap that goes to the intake but that is actually going to the stud that holds the computer in place and so that's really not going to provide a ground back to the battery in this case because it's on the housing of the computer there's some other grounds that go here there's some smaller gauge black wires that are actually computer grounds i believe you see them going to there see i believe that that eyelet for this braided steel cable should be up there with the other grounds not totally sure about that Here's another ground location next to the coolant bottle. Here's another ground stud right here. And this would be for some accessories. This is actually going directly to the battery. So our frame is grounded. This cable right here, the main battery cable, should be going to the block. Let me show you where that's connected. So that cable right there, the black cable should wrap around, down, and bolt to the starter itself on this model. And where the ground was bolted to, zoom in on it, this will be on the frame. That is where that ground was bolted to. And, you know, this is not necessarily the fault of the garage because this vehicle was brought to them with the engine halfway torn apart so the customer started the job himself and had these components apart and that's where that ground got installed to and it should have been installed on the starter makes it difficult sometimes when we get vehicles that are half torn apart and we're expected to put them back together so no big deal easy fix easy relocation of that ground to the starter housing we'll take care of that or to the block really anywhere and i'll show you one last thing with a set of jumper cables just going right to battery negative and we will go let me just go to a Part of the cylinder head down here notice that my test light as soon as i connect it look at my test light so i'm now grounding that block providing a path back to the battery and then it should crank and run at this point There you go bad block ground all right you want to see something real crazy watch this i'll take this set of jumper cables away see my test light light there briefly the car's still running how weird is that right look no cables connected take the other side off just so you guys believe me I never had the positive connected, by the way. Just use the black ground. Car's running. So it's finding the ground somewhere into the frame, but this block needs to have a better ground than what it does. It was really maybe finding a way through the transmission, through the axle, somehow to get to the frame. Hard to justify rubber mounts. 
and maybe even AC lines, whatever's connected to this block would be a ground path, just not good enough. Now watch what happens when I shut it back off. Engine off, turn the key back on. Don't see the bad ground yet, load the block, crank it. And I heard one heavy click and then whatever it was using to find that ground is no longer a ground. Voltage drop testing, loaded circuit. Again, to remind you guys if this is confusing to you what I just showed you, watch the videos that I'm posting in this description of this video. It will help you. I'll even throw in another one that deals with loaded circuit voltage drop testing. It's another theory type classroom setting lecture, uh, but really good on voltage drop testing. Voltage testing fundamentals, I think, is the is the uh, name of it. I'll put that one here too, so you guys kind of have an idea what I'm talking about. But faulty block ground, faulty engine ground. You want to check electrical systems you need to understand loaded circuits to load this block the best load that i can put on it guys is to crank the engine over that's it i'll show you one more time loaded circuit i'll crank it watch the test light there is no ground on that and again that is test light from battery negative right to something metal on the block 